Hello, and welcome to another episode of Adamo Baseball, where I'm your host, Adamo. And in this episode, I'm going to be breaking down the Cleveland question mark, question mark, question mark, assumably. Um, they got rid of the uh, Indians moniker because that's the society we live in. Um, I'm okay with it. I understand why people aren't, and I understand why people are, and I understand why some people were very adamant about it. And I did an entire episode about it a while back. You want my opinions on that? Go back to that episode. And that one's strictly podcast. I don't have that on YouTube, and I don't have a video for it. So I can't do that. Or at the very least, not right now. I don't have the the know-how to just thumbnail that and just let it play. But I am going to break down the team. So while, yes, this team is talented, most of the team is very young. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, you want talent to be young, you want to be able to hold on to it forever if you possibly can. But the, it, most of this team is just raw. They've, they've traded away most of their best players. And they are going to take a step back. The only reason why I don't have them finishing even lower in the American League Central than third, which is what I have them pegged as, is third in the division. They've got... Two superstars that are legit stars. That being Jose Ramirez and Shane Bieber, the reigning Cy Young Award winner. That's actually one of the few war awards I know from 2020. Shane Bieber won the 2020 Cy Young Award, and it was well-deserved. It was. He had an amazing year. And because he is still on the team, his rookie year wasn't exactly great, but he's only gotten better by the year. Assuming he doesn't have a Cy Young hangover, which does happen, then, yeah, he should be well within the mix again. I mean, you can make the argument that it was a shortened season, so he only had two months' worth of data to work with, but at the same time, he pitched like the best player in baseball, the best pitcher in baseball, the whole time. When it mattered most. So, it stands to reason, and there's no reason to believe that he shouldn't keep going. Since I'm already talking about Shane Bieber, I might as well go ahead and go through the rotation, as opposed to starting with a lineup like I normally do. So, yeah. Number one guy in the rotation, Shane Bieber. He is everything you want from an ace in a rotation. Number two guy in the rotation, Zach Plesak. Um, look, the other four guys in the rotation, they're young, they're raw, they're talented, but I throw Plesak in there as well because, frankly, there's not really a whole lot to say. Most of the guys don't have more than two or three years' experience. The rotation specifically, that includes Bieber. Because Shane Bieber's only been in for three years. This is his fourth season in the league, and he leads all of them. The rest of them, I don't think, have more than two years. Maybe one of them has three. I don't think so. But yeah, Zach Plesak. Aaron... Savale, I think that's how you say his name. Barely has any experience at all. So it though he has played a full season. Same with Plesak. They've both played full seasons. Tristan McKenzie has one season to his name. That's the fourth guy in the rotation. And number five in the rotation five is Cal Quantrill. He's barely got any experience at all. Uh, he was uh, 
pirate last year. He's got stats that go to 2019. But I don't think he's played in six games in his career. So that's why he's five in the rotation, because he barely has any experience. So while most of the guys in the rotation, yeah, their stats look good on paper, but most of them are just raw. Like, there's there's inexperience. Whenever I say raw, I mean the talent is there, but you don't have the experience to back up the talent that you have. Jake Locker in the NFL was a raw talent. He had world-class talent at quarterback, but because he was so raw and he was so inexperienced, whenever he got drafted by the Titans, he didn't really have any playing time in college, and whenever he got into the pros, he, it was already too late. I know I just went off on a tangent there, but that's the point I was making, is that is that most of this rotation is just raw. So, could they surprise everyone? Absolutely. I mean, they've been pumping out pitchers just one right after another. They really have. Though, I wouldn't necessarily expect the, the Cleveland team to make a lot of noise. Though, they could. Their closer, James Karinchak, uh, he's actually pretty good. Like, I was looking at his stats, and uh, I, I'm impressed. Uh, yeah, he, he actually is a pretty good pretty good reliever, so keeping him at the back end of that rotation, or back into that, you know, you know, relief pitching staff, or bullpen, do it. The rest of their bullpen are Nick Whitgren, and Emmanuel Clace. I enunciated their names because it's the first time I've said them out loud. I looked them up beforehand and like they've got stats, but again, it's raw. Outside of Shane Bieber and James Karinchak, they really don't have a lot of experience in the whole pitching staff. So, yeah, they got an ace that can win a Cy Young Award, and they got a closer that can win closer of the year. But outside of that, their pitching staff is raw, and they got a lot of work to do. So, frankly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on it this year, though, again, they can surprise. And that's only because of Terry Francona being their manager. Terry Francona is a great manager, and he's proven to work miracles in a couple of different places now. But I wouldn't bank on the Indian, or sorry, the Cleveland team to make too much noise this season. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into the lineup, which for the most part is just as raw, though talented. Uh, leading off, Cesar Hernandez, second base. I didn't know who he was, mostly because I don't really pay attention to the Phillies that much, but uh, he actually has had a pretty successful career as a leadoff guy in Philly. Uh, he walks a lot. He doesn't strike out a lot. Decent batting average. Not great, but pretty decent. He'll, he'll hit the ball one, of, one out of every four at-bats. Or, uh, yeah recorded because walks aren't don't go into that yeah uh Cesar Hernandez actually is a pretty good leadoff guy and he is a pretty good pickup for Cleveland number two Jose Ramirez third base I don't know that I need to really introduce this guy because he's been the best player in Cleveland for a long time puts it out of the park he can hit not just hit for power, but can regularly hit. He had 39 home runs in 2019. Uh, last year, obviously, his stats were down, but everyone's stats were down last year. And don't be surprised if he has an MVP season, or an MVP-type season. 
because it's not uncommon for players to have great seasons but go completely under the radar because the team's not in the playoff hunt, and don't be surprised by that either. Number three, Eddie Rosario, left field, the former twin. He was one of the guys that was taking Minnesota to the playoffs each of the last three years, or two years, or is it three? Any, anyway, Eddie Rosario was one of the consistent features for Minnesota, and now he's playing in Cleveland, so it's not like Cleveland lost everything when they traded away Francisco Lindor. Everyone saw that coming. We just didn't know that it was going to be going that he was going to be going to the Mets. It wasn't unpredictable, but it wasn't predictable either. So, yeah, they've got a solid three, you know, three guy in the rotation. Rotation in the lineup. Batting cleanup, you got Fran Mill Reyes, designated hitter. I had to look up his stats, and he actually does hit for power. Uh, going back through. Like, his stats, he actually does hit for power. He actually is a really good cleanup hitter. You wouldn't want to put him anywhere else in the lineup, but yeah, he's he's a pretty good cleanup hitter. Five through nine, this is where the talent really gets raw. Because each one of these guys, I think a couple of them have got five years, or four years. There's one player specifically that's got more than five years, and that's the catcher. But number five, uh, Josh Naylor, right field. Right fielders can hit for power. It's not uncommon. But talent's just raw. Uh, doesn't have a lot of experience. Batting sixth in the lineup, Bobby Bradley, first base. Not a lot of experience. Not really a whole lot I can really go in depth about. Because there's really not a lot to elaborate upon. Batting seventh, the guy who replaced Francisco Lindor, or is expected to, Andres Jimenez. I don't know if they pronounce their G's like H's in Spanish, but I don't think it's Jimenez because that in signifies the J. Anyway. He's replacing Lindor, and he's got some pretty big shoes to fill. I'd be shocked if he fills them. Batting eighth, Roberto Perez, the catcher. Looking at his stats, he does exactly what you expect from a catcher. He's there for his job behind the plate, not beside it. I know I've talked about this ad nauseum in several episodes. Perez is your typical catcher, eighth in the lineup, and it's not unexpected. And batting ninth in the lineup, Oscar Mercado. I think that's how you say it. Uh, center field. Yeah, uh, again, raw. He, he didn't play that much last year. And last year was his first year in the bigs. This is his first full season. Assuming he stays healthy, but also this is assuming everybody stays healthy. Because the talent is there, it just happens to be raw, and they've got two superstars on their team, I do see Cleveland... I, I think they're going to have around 500... Honestly, I don't think they're going to compete for the Central. It's possible. I've already said I think Cleveland's going to win that division with, I think I said, 97, maybe 98. And then, and then Minnesota finishes second in the division with 94. Cleveland, I think, wins somewhere between 80 and 82. Maybe as much as 85. But it depends on, probably depends a lot on their depth on the bench, because I don't, I don't necessarily see a team that raw being able to stay healthy. 
So this really could go either way. Those are my thoughts on the Cleveland question marks. And if you'd like to let me know your thoughts on the Cleveland question marks, you can do so on Patreon. I've all but given up on my Twitter account at this point. So you can you can let me know on Twitter. Adamo Baseball Podcast. There's no hyphen there. And you can also support me if you'd like. I don't require it, but uh, anything helps. And with that being said, thank you for listening or watching. Cheers until next time.